at our September Virtual UX Conference. An attendee asked Dr. Jacob Nielsen what his thoughts were on how the System Usability Scale, SUS, is used in the real world. Here are his thoughts. So the System Usability Scale is interesting because it's one of the first uh, sort of systematic ways of assessing uh, user satisfaction with a fixed set of questions. Uh, and so because of that, one of the benefits of that is that it's been used for a long time. So that's a very large data set of information about how responses have been over actually decades, right? So, so that's one of the benefits of that scale. However, that said, I feel that it's being overused. And it's not because it's old, because there's nothing wrong about being old. I mean, it's established, that's good. Uh, but some of the wording is a little clunky. But the, the main point that I think I have against it is really that it's a lot of questions. And what I want to focus on in any user research is really behavior. And you want to spend more of your time, you have very precious time with any research participants. They're hard to recruit and hard, particularly certain uh, job categories of people, are very difficult to get your hands on. And so whatever time you have with them is, is precious. And you want to spend that mostly on observing them being users, doing things, seeing what comes easy, what's difficult, um, how, they, how they perform their different tasks. And not so much about asking them in detail about their opinion. Because as we all know, opinion is the weakest form of user data. And that's not as good as driving for what you design as observation. So you want to be the expert, you know, user researcher, observing people's behavior and deducing from that what should be done. You don't want to ask them, you want to find out by observing them. People are experts in being users, you know, but their opinion is, is, is less uh, important. That said, we do want people's opinion because one of our quality criteria is satisfaction and we do want people to like our designs. And uh, maybe in the future, we can assess uh, some of these engagement type of issues through some type of face recognition or sort of artificial intelligence that can find out how happy people are by, by looking at them or by doing various types of biometrics like skin conductivity and so forth. But the truth is that these methods right now are very weak and often quite misleading. And so right now, the best way we have of knowing whether people like something or not is just to ask them, right? How much do you like it? One to seven scale or something like that and, and tell me how much you like it. But I feel that that the, just ask that one question, you know, just ask one satisfaction question. I don't think we should need to ask 10 of them and get a very elaborate set of profiles about different ways in which people like it because that's not really what's important. I mean, even for things like, let's say, the visual design, which is something that you often want to say, like, is it appealing or not? But um, often you can actually get a better assessment of that by noting what people comment on as they're using the design. Are they commenting on this looks cool or this looks boring? Those are much. Those are in context, in the context of use, comments um, are often much more valid, more interesting, and also again because they give you a feeling of why people say something. Uh, also better at uh, driving design change, which again is, is why we're doing the research. So so bottom line, I mean, the benefit of, of SUS of SUS is that uh, it has a lot of data in it already because it's been used for decades. The downside, I think, is it consumes too much time and, and, and attention, and we should pay less attention to uh, opinion and more, uh, more attention to uh, observation. And I would say just ask people one question for satisfaction.